the uh, London Palladium, mate. There you go. That'll be a tenner, please, mate. Are you, are you sure you're all right? I'll, yeah, I'll get the door for you then. Do you want a receipt? He's drunk. drunk. Come on, give, give me your hand. Give us your hand. Oh, she's, she's in tonight, you know. It's typical. Absolutely typical. Give us your other hand. Other hand. Always the same. Always the pretty same. Ma, may I introduce Mr. Kirk, our managing director, and Mr. Skidmore, executive producer, let us say. Now, ma'am, if you'd like to come this way. Oh, late. Come on, we're late. Like this way, this way, this way. You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be always all right. Like bloody safe. This is Miss Fortescue, ma'am. We'll be looking after you this evening. Stay in one. Just good. Need it there. Need it there. Come on. Come on. No. Please. Come on. very nice to be here on a, on a Thursday um, here at the London Plain. It's been funny sort of weather, isn't it, really? Because it sort of looked like it was going to be a bit of sun earlier this morning and then some rain clouds came in and it started to rain quite a bit and then the little sun poked out again and then a few more rain clouds after that. And then it got dark about half an hour ago. Well, we, we sort of expected that, really, didn't we? <laughs> well, that's the topical stuff out of the way with, anyway. <laughs> I was sitting in a restaurant the other day and... <laughs> Feels as if I'm in a Queen video. So, <laughs> I was in a restaurant the other day, and there's a bloke sitting next to me with a really stupid haircut. So I hit him. <laughs> Nobody takes the piss out of me. <laughs> I'd, I'd hate to give up smoking because, um, well, I don't smoke. <laughs> if I was to give it up, I'd have to start, and I've tried starting, I just haven't got the willpower. I've tried suddenly starting, <laughs> gradually increasing the number of cigarettes I smoke each day, cutting up. <laughs> Sometimes I find myself not having a cigarette and then not having another one immediately afterwards. <laughs> I'm probably not smoking 50 to 60 cigarettes a day. <laughs> of course, there's all kinds of methods for people who want to give up smoking. There's nicotine chewing gum, hypnotism, my aunt used to pour a gallon of petrol over herself every morning. <laughs> the idea being that she couldn't light up without turning herself into a human fireball. <laughs> Didn't stop her. <laughs> She'd be in the living room, you'd hear a cough and a whoosh. <laughs> she was up to 40 whooshes a day by the end of it. The bloke next door's had surgery to stop him smoking. He's had his lips sewn together like that, right there. But he still carried on smoking. 
He used to put the cigarettes up his nose and smoke them like that. So the doctors thought, well, this is no good. So they got hold of him and they pumped a load of cavity foam up his nose. Like but he still carried on smoking. And it wasn't through his ears either, I can tell you. <laughs> He'd be sitting on the bus and everybody would wonder where the smoke rings were coming from. <laughs> Nobody else had a drag on his fag, I can tell you. <laughs> In the end, he was cured by acupuncture. They stuck some needles in his eyes, he went blind, he couldn't find his fags anymore. <laughs> it's always been an ambition of mine to get hold of a video camera and go round to Jeremy Beadle's house, disguised as a mad axeman, just for a laugh, <laughs> and then kill him. <laughs> And I'd get all the bits and pieces and I'd chop them up and I'd hide them all over the countryside and I'd send Annika Rice up <laughs> in a helicopter to look for them and the programme would be called Beadles About. <laughs> Do you know, I always wanted to ask Lee Harvey Oswald, can you remember what you were doing when President Kennedy was assassinated? <laughs> Over here, you sort of get Irish jokes, but in, in Ireland, they tell exactly the same jokes, but they tell them about the people from Kerry. So it's like the Kerry man who did this or the Kerry man who did that. So I went to the county of Kerry, and I found that there, they told the same jokes, but they told them about a small village within the county of Kerry. So I went to this small village, <laughs> and there, they tell the same jokes, but they tell them about the people that live at number 54. <laughs> So I went to number 54, and there they tell the same jokes, but they tell them about their dad. Except their dad actually goes out and does all these things that become Irish jokes. <laughs> and it's just one bloke doing it. <laughs> and if it wasn't for the family taking notes, we'd never get to hear about it. And I went round to see them, and I sat in the kitchen, and it was about half past six in the evening, and he came in, the dad came in, and he said, all right, Dad, how are you? He said, well, I've just been to the doctors. Oh, good, he's been to the doctors. Get the notebook out. <laughs> what happened at the doctors, Dad? Well, I said to the doctor, uh, doctor, I want to be sterilised, so he boiled me for eight hours. <laughs> it's a good one. We'll do that down the pub tonight, that one. <laughs> Anything else, Dad? Well, I was coming home on the bus from the doctors, and there's a bloke sitting in front of me who's got custard in one ear and jelly in the other. So I said to him, are you a trifle deaf? <laughs> and he said, no, I'm uh, mentally ill, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, I don't get that one. I should do that one. <laughs> About a year ago, I had a burglar. I was lucky. I disturbed him. I said... There is no God. <laughs> but he wasn't the problem. It was the builder who came round to fix the front door. Now, this builder wasn't just stupid. He was king stupid. He comes in. He walks up to one of my walls. He looks at it. He taps it. He says, Who put that there? Now, I let that one go. <laughs> which was a mistake. I wouldn't eat in an Indian restaurant. You don't know what you're eating. Dog. That's what I reckon. Now, people say this, but like, if you're a chef in an Indian restaurant and it's your job to get a week's supply of meat, what are you going to do? Are you going to go down to the butchers, buy some chicken, buy some lamb, or are you going to run around the streets late at night <laughs> trying to catch Labradors and a butterfly net? <laughs> and then the builder says, This burglar. Black, was he? I said he wasn't black, no. Are you sure? I said, well, I only saw his face, really. Uh, I've no idea. Because they're quite clever, some of them, you know. They don't look black, but they are. Half an hour later, I gave him a bucket of water. What's that? I said, it's a cup of coffee, but some of these cups of coffee are quite clever, you know. <laughs> but you see... <laughs> I thought this bloke was stupid, but then his mate turned up, and his mate, he was really stupid. <laughs> Ah, oh, that Angus Deaton, he done half make me laugh. <laughs> now, you can't get much more stupid than that, really, can you? <laughs> Do you know there was a time, there was a time when men wore wooden condoms? Now, I know it sounds like something I've made up, and I have. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but there was a time when men wore wooden condoms and they used to stand around the pubs in the 15th century. So, sort of, here, here, Harry, have a look at that. <laughs> Solid oak, that is. <laughs> I, I, I had squirrels in there last year. <laughs> I might put a drop of creosote on that later on. <laughs> of course, it was the Romans who wore condoms made out of the guts of sheep. And I imagine this bloke walking through the Colosseum sort of stuck on a sheep. <laughs> and somebody says, what are you doing? He says, I'm wearing a condom. <laughs> I just couldn't be bothered to take it out of the packet. <laughs> Martin Park Studios presents Murder Most Scarlet. Detective Inspector Collins was one of the finest detectives in Scotland Yard. He was met on the steps of Greyshot Hall by young Lord Greyshot, a dashingly handsome fellow whose animal magnetism attracted animals from all over the surrounding area. <laughs> he had, in fact, been banned from the local safari park <laughs> for trying to penetrate the lion's enclosure. Ah, Inspector, thank God you're here. It's my father. Has he been murdered? Yes. The body's upstairs. Follow me. Righto. It's quite a square house you got here. Yes. <laughs> oh, interesting. Judging by the mud on his knees, I'd say he'd be kneeling down in mud. <laughs> Extraordinary. Shall we go back down? Why not? <laughs> that door wasn't there before. <laughs> here we are. All right. There's a body down here as well. <laughs> But that's my father's twin brother, Lord Greyshot. How do we know he's not the same man? Impossible. I'll go upstairs and check. I'll stay here. All right. <laughs> I'm on the roof. There's a body up here as well. Hey, there's a body up here as well. Yeah, and down here. Oh, I'll come back down. Right oh. Okay. I think I'll use the lift. I see you found the lift. Yes, I did. <laughs> now, who was in the house at the time of the murder? Well, there was Peters, the gardener. Right, send him in. You want to see me, sir? Ah, oh, Peters, where were you on November the 22nd, 1963, between the hours of two and three in the afternoon? I was leaning out of a third-storey window with a high-velocity rifle in my hand. <laughs> I think I found the bloke who murdered President Kennedy. Oh, well done. Very good. Very good. Last! You're wiggling out of me with your clever police ways. <laughs> Just cos the telly's in. <laughs> You've got bring it up, haven't you? Beautiful, man. Yeah. Comedy gardeners, that's your life, isn't oh, it? I made a study, I have. Oh, you made a study of oh, you. Hey. <laughs> He's doing it now, look. Like this? It's catching on. <laughs> that's the next big craze. <laughs> What, doing that? <laughs> <laughs> but you have an older leg. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, I'll have to remember that, and I'll look out for that one next time I go to an acid house rave. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions, sir? No, no, oh no, you might as well go, actually. Thank yeah, you very much. You what happened to the scripts? I don't know. <laughs> we had one when we started, didn't yeah, we? I know, yeah. Right, who else was in the house at the time of the murder? Well, there was Professor Heinrich, the visiting German serial killer. <laughs> He's spending the winter in the summer house. Right, send him in. What, Narvin? Ah, oh, Professor Heinrich. <laughs> Have you heard about this dance craze? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you? Yeah. It's speaking the nation, as far as I've heard. Really? All right, no further questions. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, could you send the gardener back in, please? Farewell. You want to see me, sir? Oh, yes. Could you send Professor Heinrich back in here, please? <laughs> He's not feeling very well. Well, I want to see him anyway. No, he really is rather poorly. I insist. <laughs> well, there's no need for language, is there? No. Not if you're an orange. Good enough. 
Good night. Oh, could you tell Peter's the gardener that I want to see everybody in the library in 15 minutes' time? Well, uh, everybody? Yeah. At the same time? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> More language! Well, you better show me where the library is then. Yes, the library's down this way. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> oh, you'd lose yourself and know your way around, oh. wouldn't you? It's enormous. Isn't oh. it? Oh. Ah, the Peters, where's Professor Heinrich? Uh, he's just coming. Really? Oh, dear, the lights have gone out just as I walk into the room. What a shame. Oh, a bit of luck for you, though. No. Oh. Now, Peters, have you got an alibi? Ah. Oh. Heinrich, how about you? I was with him. Ah, the final piece of the jigsaw. When the lights come back on, the killer will be standing in this room. <laughs> oh, it must have been me, then. Looks like the policeman did it all along. Mind you, the same thing happens in the mouse trap, so that saved you 15 quid a ticket, isn't it? <laughs> OK, it's been running 42 years. They must have made their money back by now. <laughs> they must have done.
and gentlemen, as you know, I often like to introduce newcomers onto the stage, perhaps people who haven't worked that much in public before, and really tonight is no exception, because I am so pleased to be able to showcase somebody who has recently won the Funniest Man in Moscow competition. So, let's have a big Palladium-style welcome for Ivan Dysinovich! Dostrovetsky. Good evening. I was travelling on the underground the other day. I didn't want to get attacked. So I disguised myself as the Pope. Man of God immune. I met a bloke disguised as the Antichrist. And he kicked the shit out of me. <laughs> Boom, boom. <laughs> Do you know the very first tube station ever opened? Was Baker Street in 1868. What was the point of that? Where would you go? <laughs> what was the rush hour like? <laughs> He's doing my jokes out here. <laughs> These are my jokes he's doing. By the way, I live locally. Well, I always have lived locally. Wherever I live, I always make damn sure it's local. There's no point in living five miles from your house. You never get back at night. What's Russian for get off? During the Blitz, in the Second World War, my dad used to say, Don't worry about the bombs. The only bombs you've got to worry about are the ones that have got your names written on them. That scared the next door neighbours. Mr. and Mrs. Doodlebug. That's the biggest laugh that's ever got. My name's Paul Merton. Good night. It's my name. He said my name. <laughs> I know I'd like to bring on a very special friend of mine. He's the Lenny Henry of Leningrad. Igor Davinsky. Igor Davinsky. Igor Davinsky. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm a big chicken. <laughs> Cluck, cluck, cluck. <laughs> I said we weren't going to do the chicken tonight. <laughs> Not do the chicken tonight. Yet. Oh, all right then. <laughs> Here's one. There's this chicken walks into a restaurant and he says to the waiter, I'll have a bowl of soup. So the waiter comes back with a bowl of soup and the waiter's got his thumb stuck in a soup. And the chicken says, Why have you got your thumb stuck in a soup for? And the waiter says, It keeps me thumb warm. And the chicken says, Why didn't you shove it up your ass? The waiter says, I do when I'm in the kitchen. It's always the same with you, isn't it? But trick, but trick, but trick. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Mother of a girl goes to the Your wife seems to like it. <laughs> my wife. <laughs> Your wife. <laughs> What's my wife got to do with it? <laughs> She's lovely. And now a song. I'll stuff this. <laughs> Morba, 
Magus gedrum, magur, magabus gus geri. Bedrus geru, bedrus ge burba kas geri, badru magus geru. Bedrus ge burba kas geri, burba bus ge novari. Bedrus ge farba kas ge nova, nova tru magus geri, badrus geru. Bedrus geru, bedrus ge burba kas geri, badru magus geru. Petus ke pum petusi petu vatru vagar begi vatros karo vatros karo. Dostrovetsky. Po srodno po trof, dost nordaš je rotna. Po srodno po trofta, štrofno štro trofta. Po srof trofta, imperial letter. Igor. Mbrzke. Po srodno po trofta, štrofta. Mudrge, vodra, vodra. Po srodno letra. Mudrge. Mudrge. Mudrava ga drajva! Hej, maga za ga drav ga, dej? A, prozoj ga nojčta! Mudrava ga drajva! 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 Imperium leader! Mudrava ga drajva! O, potrojete, potrojete, potrojete! I remember my first day here at Wimbledon College, even though it was 25 years ago. Being a stranger to the school, I made the mistake of turning up on my very first day with a working class accent. For this, I took a severe cane in. In the face. <laughs> but it never did me any harm. The next day, some of the older boys made me eat my own blazer. <laughs> I was reported to the headmaster for not wearing the full school uniform. I was caned across the eyes. But it never did me any harm. Later that term, I was accused of coming from a family that didn't have very much money. I was taken out in front of the entire school by the headmaster. My internal organs were removed, <laughs> caned, and replaced. <laughs> this experience left me physically and emotionally scarred, rendering me a twisted psychotic, unable to extinguish the raging fires of hell that burn eternally within my soul. But it never did me any harm. <laughs> In conclusion, I'd just like to say that my school days were the happiest days of my life. Which gives you some idea of the misery I've endured over the past 25 years. Thank you. Ah, uh, Doctor. Ah, Inspector. I'm sorry to disturb you, Doctor, but this is urgent. I know. Have you finished your report? On the Ballam phone box murders. The Ballam phone box murders, yes. I've got to say, this is the most baffling case I've ever come across. And why is that? Two of the victims were found buried in Epping Forest. Yeah? Another one was found in an underground car park in Romford. So what's your problem? Why are we calling them the Ballam phone box murders? <laughs> well, I was in a phone box in Ballam when I first heard about them. That's a bit thin, isn't it? But you've got to call them something, something with a snap. I mean, the public aren't going to be interested in the Epping Forest and Romford car park murder inquiry, are they? Yeah, but you might as well call them the having a cup of tea in the canteen murders. That's where I was when I first heard about them. Jim, in accounts, was getting his hair cut. You're not going to call them, do you want anything more for the weekend, sir, murders, are you? <laughs> All right. Well, what do we know? Right. Well, this is Bert Warder. I've done several tests on him, and I reckon this man is dead. Tests? Yeah. Mind you, we haven't tried tweaking his kneecaps. 
Did you? Is that where you keep your kneecap, is it? <laughs> I was trying a bit higher up. Were you? Yeah. Yeah, he's dead, all right. Yeah. So how did he die? How did he die? I'll show you. I thought you'd never asked. Yeah. I reckon this bloke was shot. <laughs> what about the knife in his chest? That was me trying to get the bullet out. <laughs> you can't use a spoon, you know. He's keeping very still tonight, he's isn't very, he? He's very good. He started to crack, though. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He's going. He's gone. Yeah. yeah, he's gone. That knife's moving around yeah. a bit, isn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you what. Yeah? It's moving down there as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's no way. That's only his kneecap. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> if you put a light on that, you get a nice disco effect yeah. up there. Yeah, very good. Is it moving? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's moving, all right, yeah. Right, what about the script? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I've managed to build up a psych... I've managed to build up a psychological pro... He's still laughing. Yeah, he's still going, yeah. yeah. I've managed to build up a psychological profile of our killer. Oh, that's good news. It is good news. He's a man or a woman <laughs> whose height is somewhere between 2 foot 1 and 7 foot 11. <laughs> Well, that rules out Jack 7 foot 12 McGuinness, then, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> doctor, Doctor, he's alive! That Angus Deaton, he doesn't have to make me laugh. <laughs> so I had to do that, he was rambling. I'd like to do a joke now that's been very good to me over the years. <laughs> it has special memories for me and I hope, in its own way, it has special memories for you too. <laughs> I was standing at a bus stop when I noticed the man standing next to me had only one leg. <laughs> Thank you. I looked at my two legs, I looked at his one leg, and I remember thinking, I bet you're rubbish at table tennis. <laughs> and this bloke, yes, this bloke, was eating a chocolate mint ice cream, and suddenly the bus came round the corner. The one-legged bloke tried to get out of the way, the driver, thanks to years of experience, ran straight over him. <laughs> and the chocolate mint ice cream went somersaulting up into the air. Suddenly, the bus exploded above a gas main, sending a fireball 500 feet up into the air. Narrowly missing a plane, but blinding the pilot, he avoided a crash landing by flying straight into a housing estate. <laughs> 500 people dead. Luckily, <laughs> there were no passengers on the plane and just five and a half tons of nuclear material, <laughs> which leaked and poisoned everyone within a five mile radius. and the chocolate mint ice cream that had gone somersaulting up into the air landed on my shirt. <laughs> Why does it always happen to me?
that's not something you see every day, is it? <laughs> you know, I think it's a very depressing thing when fifth-rate TV comics feel they've got to make ends meet by appearing in third-rate pantomimes. And so we proudly present... <laughs> Aladdin! Welcome to the story of Aladdin. It's got some good, it's got some bad in. He's an orphan, how about that? So if your rand is flat, don't expect to find his mum or his dad in. He lives with his auntie, widow Twanky, who yearns for a life that is more swanky. Oh, but look who's just come, it's Aladdin's best chum. He's chirpy, he's cheeky, it's Buttons. Hello, boys and girls. Well, you can do better than that. <laughs> when I come out and say hello, boys and girls, I'm going to shout out, hello, buttons. All right, let's give it a go. He's chirpy, he's cheeky, it's buttons. Hello, boys and girls. Hello, buttons. Oh, that's nice to hear, cos I haven't got any friends at all. <laughs> Don't you patronise me. <laughs> Well, I have got one friend, Aladdin, but I'm a bit worried about him because he's auntie, Widow Twanky. She's got a new boyfriend, Abanaza, and they don't really get on well. They don't get on well at all. But wait a minute, who's just coming past the old shoe factory? Why, it's none other than my best chum, Aladdin. Buttons, buttons, buttons. You know, <coughs> I, <laughs> you know, thank you. You know, Abanaza, you know, Abanaza's not so bad after all. He wants me to climb inside his magic cave. Does he? Yeah, he says the entrance is much too small for him, uh -huh. but I'm just the right size. Really? Yeah, and you know, his magic cave is where he keeps all his treasure! <laughs> well, that's his afternoon sorted out. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls! <laughs> Hello, oh, God. Well, that's a shiver went down the back of my spine then. I so I was doing it for real, but I'm very worried. <laughs> oh, dear. Now we've got a coach party in from High Wycombe, I believe. <laughs> oh, but I'm very worried about Aladdin down in Abanaza's cave, though. I'm so worried about him. I hope he's going to be all right. I'm in, Mr. Abanaza. Good boy, Aladdin. <laughs> Right? Just tell me, Aladdin. What? What can you see? More treasure than ever I dreamed of. Ooh. <laughs> You're pushing it, you really are. <laughs> can you see a golden lamp? A golden lamp? No, but there's this old one tarnished and covered in cobwebs. Oh, good. Pass it up to me. When I've given you the lamp, you will help me out of the cave, won't you? Give it to me! I can't think what Abanaza wants with this old lamp. Why, it's tarnished and covered in cobwebs still. It might be gold underneath. What do you think I should do with it, boys and girls? Thank you. Very quick and very keen. Well done. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a bit of a buff just over here. There we are. Oh, lovely. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> You're bloody mad. I am the genie of the lamp. Your wish is my command. Can I wish for anything? Anything at all. But first, I'd like to do a few impressions. <laughs> I was at this Hollywood party the other day when who should walk in but the late, great Cary Grant. Are you crazy? Someone tried to kill me last night. <laughs> I look like a murderer to you. When I kiss a girl, she stays kissed. <laughs> I wouldn't touch it with a barge bowl. <laughs> but wait, who's that with him, Why It's a legendary master of suspense, Sir Alfred Hitchcock. Good evening. <laughs> but who's this with him? Why, it's none other than the star of stage, screen and radio, Sir Alec Guinness. So you want to be a Jedi? <laughs> well, that's... That's marvellous, Genie. Listening to you has helped me decide what I want to wish for. First, I want to get out of this cave. Second, I want Abanaza banished. Third, 
I want to marry the princess of Pantoland, Princess Cinderella. Your wish is my command. Oh, I'm only worried about Aladdin now, I am. But I'll let you into a little secret, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, kids and kidlings, liver and bacon, spring and onion. I'll let you... whiskey and soda. I'll let you into a little secret. I'm in love with a princess. Oh, she's lovely. But wait a minute, I think I can hear her coming now. And look, she's been swimming. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Isn't she lovely? <laughs> Gold knows what the ugly sisters look like. <laughs> what are you doing? It's me radio pack. That's not the pack we're looking at. <laughs> Here, you know that rabbit that went missing? <laughs> I think I know where it's hiding. Not strictly necessary, is it, really? What? It's, it's riding up at the back. Is it? Yeah. You think it'd have more sense? <laughs> that hat looks stupid. What? That hat looks stupid. Oh, I wouldn't do for one of us to look stupid, would it? <laughs> oh, what an idiot I've made of myself. She's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. You ought to get out more. <laughs> oh, she's lovely. Princess, princess, princess. The genie has granted all my wishes. I was released from the cave. Abenaz has been burned. Oh, God. <laughs> don't you start. If I don't fiddle with it, there'll be a disaster. <laughs> oh, blah. Right, that's... I'm not holding hands with you, right? What? It says I'm supposed to hold hands. In the script, I'm supposed to hold hands with you. I'm not holding hands with you. I'm all that. Well, what's it like your side? <laughs> Hammy hamster after a big meal. <laughs> you could open a bottle of Guinness back here. <laughs> You'd be the only one drinking it. Hello, I'm Terry. I work for the Nationwide Building Society, and this is my advert. <laughs> Quick impression. San Francisco. <laughs> Please, just a little while. Yeah. Mm. What? Uh, the wishes, though. What's <laughs> all this? That's modesty, that is. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> Wishes, but the best wish of all, though, is that we, Princess Cinderella, we are to be married. Oh, Aladdin! No way! <laughs> yeah, we're getting married. We are Buttons, me and the princess here. Aww. Shut your face! <laughs> oh, but something seems to be wrong with my best chum, Buttons. Now, what could it be? What's the matter with your Buttons? No, I'm not going to do that, Buttons. What's the matter with well, you? Well, I wanted to marry the princess. Oh, I don't want to upset you. But on second thoughts, you can keep her. <laughs> no, I did. I wanted did to you? marry her. I don't want to upset you, Buttons. Don't You're you? my best chum. Am I? I've got an idea. Why don't we let the boys and girls decide who should marry the princess? Well, Arlie seems a solid basis for a marriage. <laughs> but all right, go on then. All right, so if you want me to marry the princess, sing along with me after three. One, two, three. There's only one fella to marry Cinderella. He's chirpy, he's cheeky, Aladdin. Beat that! Go on! But if somebody coughs, I'll beat that. <laughs> you mug. All right, well, we'll sing the same song, and if you think I should marry the princess, sing buttons at the end, but between you and me, I'm not that bothered, so don't feel... Don't strain yourself, that's what I'm saying, don't strain yourself. All right, we'll sing this, we'll sing the end, all right? Here we go. Sing buttons again, here we go. One, two, three. There's only one fella to marry Cinderella. He's chirpy, he's cheeky, it's Buttons. I don't think the boys and girls give a shit, Buttons. <laughs> shit, Buttons? Yeah. 
Have you seen a doctor? <laughs> no, it's not there. Sounds like an old cowboy actor from the 1940s. Shit buttons. <laughs> Our man from Laramie. Afraid of no horse. <laughs> Hi, my name's Shit. My friends call me Shit Buttons. How do you do? <laughs> Thanks for cleaning the town up, Shit. <laughs> Pleased to be your deputy, Shit. <laughs> I'd like to shake you by the hand, Shit. That's not his real name, you know. Is it not? No, shit buttons. That's ludicrous. Yeah. No, his real name was Shit O'Hulahan. <laughs> well, I think. He invented. He invented a new kind of glue. What was that then? Shit stick. <laughs> Do you see it? Still see it in the shops, Do you really? know? Really? Yeah. His mother, of course, his mother, she was the real genius in the family, you know? Yeah. Oh, she made her, she made her name in bread like nobody else has ever done it before. <laughs> in bread? In bread, yeah, all kinds of bacon and stuff. Yeah, she invented this whole new thing that people still eat even today. What was that? Shit baps. <laughs> Shit baps? Yeah. Well, you couldn't call them anything else because of the Trade Description Act, you see? Because it was bap, shit and bap. <laughs> Sounds like the first name of the Beverly Sisters, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they were popular. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> we should give the boys and girls, right, another chance to they sing. They don't want another chance. They don't want another chance. They don't want another chance. Could chance. you just hurry up? It's bloody freezing. <laughs> oh, that's right. Swear in front of the boys and girls. <laughs> Ruin the kiddies Christmas. <laughs> Mummy, why did that man say bloody? Because he's an arsehole, darling. <laughs> Sounds like an early female aviator, doesn't it? Arsehole, darling, flies the Atlantic. <laughs> well, I think, right, the boy... Who cares? Nobody cares what you think. <laughs> no! Since you mucked up the corpse in the pathology <laughs> sketch. <laughs> Well, we'll know when you're dead, won't we? Because you'll be doing that all night. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Here, can you, can you play the black notes with that? <laughs> Good half hurt, though. <sighs> you're lucky it's not a harp. Well, this time, boys and girls... Oh, come on, get on with it, oh, will you? thanks. <laughs> What's going to happen this time, boys and girls, is we're all going to sing the song together, but just at the end, you shout out who you want to marry the princess, Aladdin or Buttons. So all sing together Can we do now. the funny dance that goes with it? <laughs> Which funny dance? That is? one. <laughs> all right. Get them all to do that. That should nudge a few people off the end, shouldn't it? <laughs> I do the new dance phase, <laughs> the elbow dance. The right? elbow boys, dance. The yeah. elbow dance, boys and girls. Here we go after three. One, two, three. There's only one fella to marry Cinderella. He's chirpy, he's cheapy, it's. <laughs> oh, that sounded very close to me, Buttons. It was. I said it sounded very close to me, Buttons. Why, have you changed your name to Buttons? <laughs> that was a big whisper of Aladdin came from the top. That's somebody crossing their knees up there. <laughs> That's lycra you're hearing. Well, I've got a way to solve all of this. Have you? Yes, I have. Are you going to invent a new dance? <laughs> no. Well, I've already done that. Oh, well, have you? What we're going to do is we'll both marry the princess. Well, we are best chums after all. Well, we will be after the honeymoon. <laughs> so that was the story of Aladdin. It had some good, it had some bad in. And now very, very soon we'll be on honeymoon And they're both looking forward to the shagging <laughs> But they don't know that Cinderella Has already got herself a fella His name is Abanaza, you should see what's in his trousers He's chirpy, he's cheeky, the end
We used to be unhappy, we used to moan and moan. We never went to parties, we'd always stay at home. The headlines in the papers would always make us cry. I was a very unhappy chappy, and I was a real plum guy. But one day someone showed us that life could be a game. He changed our lives forever. Mr. Happy was his name. Mr. Happy, born with a smile on his face. The happiest man in the human race. Mr. Happy, a look at his cheeky grin. Sends the blues away and lets the happiness in. Mr. Happy, a smile for everyone. His smile is brighter than the sun. Mr. Happy, he's the man with the happy plans. He's happy and he knows you clap your hands. He used to be a man of little cheer. His heart was full of woe and full of fear. His prospects looking bleak. He cried ten times a week, and the weeks turned into months, turned into years. But then one day he had a revelation that tended all his days of consternation. His life had been a trial till he started to smile. Mr. Happy, now it's time to tell the nation. You've got a little cough, be happy. If your head falls off, be happy. If you find that your wife leads a double life, you know what to do, be happy. If your house burns down, be happy. If your suit is brown, be happy. If life treats you hard, cos you're a tub of lard, you know what to do, be happy.
another.